Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our regular Sunday service. Uh, um, thank you for coming out this morning. I know before the service, some of us were just talking about the, the terrible uh, event of the super grocer burning down. It's funny because, it, uh, you know, it, you can lose an inanimate object, and yet it feels very much like losing uh, somebody dear to you. Uh, I'm sure all of you are, are feeling the same way. Uh, but we'll begin this morning's uh, Sunday service with a moment of silent meditation, followed by the recitation of the name of the Buddha or the Nembutsu. And good morning to everyone on Zoom as well. Can you hear me okay? Good, good, okay. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, we are going to read our pledge, and let me just turn on the screens here. Um, I think it's uh, our pledges on the back of the uh, on the table in the back there, uh, but I will bring it up on the screen as well. So if you want it, what would happen to that? Oh, give me just two seconds. Somehow it disappeared. I have to bring it back up. Sorry, everyone, I just you have to bring up. Sorry, I had it up um, before the service, and I don't know what happened. It disappeared. So uh, I hope you can all see it now on your screens. Okay. Our pledge. Breaking out of my shell, I shall carefully share a warm smile and speak gentle words just like the kind Buddha, not becoming lost in my greed, anger, and ignorance, I shall be open-minded and act accordingly, just like the calm and peaceful Buddha. Not putting myself first, I shall share in the joy and sadness of others, just like the compassionate Buddha. Realizing the gift of life we have received, I shall live each day to its fullest, like the Buddha who continues to emancipate all. Thank you. And next we will be chanting the Junirai, which you'll find on page 63 of the Purple Satan, or it's also on the screen as well. No man loves, no man loves, no man loves, no man loves. No man loves. Yeah. 
소 이선부 세드무 아금여 야금은 연이 아그너 주님 시신 교이성 오가 Of the Juni Lai, and you'll find it on um, page 70. It's also on the screen. Before Amida Buddha, whom Deva, heavenly beings, and men worship, I humble myself in deepest reverence. In his wondrous land of bliss, surrounded is he by countless bodhisattvas. His golden form shines forth pure like the Makkim Mount Sumeru. His practice of truth is steadfast like an elephant's pace. His eyes radiate like pure blue lotus blossoms. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. His countenance is perfectly pure and round like the full moon. His majestic light shines like a thousand suns and moons. His voice is like a heavenly drum, yet like a heavenly bird, Kokila. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. Avalokiteshvara wears upon his crown the image of Amida adorned with many precious jewels. He subdues the arrogance of demons and heretics. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. 
Incomparable, vast, and pure his virtues are. Clearly extending like vast open space, his acts freely benefiting all, thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. Bodhisattvas from the ten quarters and countless Maras, demons, always venerate him. He dwells with vow power for the sake of all beings. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. In the golden treasure pond where the lotus flowers bloom, established with goodness is a wondrous throne, where reigns the Buddha like the king of the mounts. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. From the ten quarters, bodhisattvas come. Revealing wondrous powers, they attain blissful state. Honoring his face, they offer eternal bliss. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. All things are transient and without self, like the moon on water, lightning, shadow, or the dew. The Dharma cannot be expressed by words, the Buddha proclaimed. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. No words of evil are in his land, no fear of evildoers, nor evil pass. With sincere heart, all beings worship him. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. His land of infinite expediencies is without degenerate things or wicked beings. Upon rebirth, non-retrogressive Bodhi does one attain. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. Thus have I praised the virtues of Amida Buddha. Boundless are they like the water of the sea. Upon receiving these pure and good qualities, may all beings be reborn into his land. Namo Amidabhas, Namo Amidabhas, Namo Amidabhas, Namo Amidabhas. Uh, we'll next have a Dharma talk, and today uh, I've asked Roy Sensei to give the Dharma message. So without any further ado, uh, we'll ask Roy Sensei to give the Dharma talk. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you all here today. Uh, Reverend Grant had mentioned earlier in the beginning of our service that uh, there's a, a landmark in Stevenson that has disappeared before all of us. And why it's uh, such a personal thing for me is because um, on Monday, I would usually phone and order the flowers. And on Friday, I'd go and pick it up. And um, Winnie, the head florist, would say, Roy, you know, these flowers are too expensive. I wouldn't think about buying them. Consider these instead. And so this is a kind of relationship that I have had with Winnie. And now, we don't know what we're going to do. So anyway, we'll find something. So next week, the flowers may be a little different. But anyway, before we begin, let's put our hands together in Gashu, shall we? Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Yeah, Verve from Grant had asked me to say a few words this morning. And uh, I'm going to talk briefly about, uh, I guess you might say, my experience. And. Uh, you know, on Fridays, as I say, I put the flowers together. Um, and uh, I'm kind of, you know, hanging around here for two or three or four hours some days. And on some occasions, I get these visitors that would come in. And uh, Keiko-san or Renoko-san, the office staff, would say, Roy-san, there are visitors here. So then I would introduce myself and we would talk. Uh, one time I had uh, a Sri Lankan mother and a daughter that come by, came by 
And there's a real commonality because Buddhism is very strong in Sri Lanka. So we, we had a wonderful conversation. Another occasion, a, a family of, uh, from one of the uh, Indian temples came and visited us. And so I had a conversation with them. Uh, there was one that I had, that conversation I had, that really struck me. And uh, it was a, a couple, a Polish-Canadian couple. And their mother, they came in and uh, we introduced ourselves. And the Polish-Canadian couple said, this is my mother. She is from Krakow, Poland. And the first time that she has been here in Canada. She doesn't speak much English at all. But she's a real interest in religion. And so one of the visits we're making as part of this pilgrimage for her is this temple. We've been to the Lingyan Temple on number five road, and it was all right, uh, because I guess there aren't too many people that speak uh, English as their first language. And then they went to the International Buddhist Center on Stevenson Highway. And again, you know, there aren't too many people that are there. There are a lot of people, but they don't have that person to welcome people and, and talk about it. Well, you know, if there's only one person here on that particular day. <laughs> Who else can you do? <laughs> so here I am. Anyway, uh, the conversation went on such that she, through her son, asked about all of the different aspects of the altar. And uh, so, uh, you know, we, we talked about it almost for about 40 minutes. I know that the mother was quite keen. She was taking in a lot of this information. But, you know, we talk about causes and circumstances and events that affect us. Well, this particular discussion I had it really must have affected me because, you know, I pushed my memory button. And I remember this story that I had read at one time. I don't know when, but I remember this story so vividly that I want to share it with you. Um, the, the impact has, I think, a real Jodo Shinshu, a Buddhist uh, meaning to it. And what happened was, this young girl, maybe about mid-teens, mid she was in Germany and she went to this music store, this music equipment store, and there she saw Ludwig von Beethoven's piano. Because all we know that Beethoven had about seven or eight or nine pianos and he destroyed about half a dozen of them but they were all restored. And I think this is one of those that was restored and in this store for sale. And history says that there are about two left right now uh, in the world. And you know, Beethoven goes back to about the early 1800s and perhaps the most well-known pianist in the world. Anyway, she has real music knowledge and perhaps very, very familiar with Beethoven. And she saw this piano, and she looked at it and says, you know what, that's Beethoven's piano. So she went inside, and there must have been half a dozen other people there. So what she did was she sat on the piano stool, and she started to play Beethoven's Symphony No. 5, his most famous classic music. And the people around in the store, it must have been a fairly large store, all came to attention and they listened. And so she stood up and bowed and smiled and they all clapped. She thought, oh my goodness, oh wow, hey, I'm pretty good. And so anyway, there was a moment there and she thought, well, I'm going to look around the store and there are other Beethoven memorabilia. And so she looked around, and as she was doing this, she noticed that there's a gentleman 
He came in to the door, sat down. And he just sat there. And it was almost in a meditative style, a meditative mood. Then he just sat there, his hands on his lap, and just sat there and looked at the piano. A gentleman who was standing around tapped on this girl's shoulder because she saw this person come in as well. And she saw him sit down and saw this meditative person. He tapped her, her shoulder and said, you know who that is? That is Ignatyev Yan Paderewski. And Paderewski is the most famous Polish pianist. And she said, oh. And she thought to herself, what a wonderful opportunity for me to hear and to see this famous Polish pianist play. And so she waited and she waited and nothing happened. And her anxiety got hold of her. She said, I want to hear this person play the piano because I know Paderewski and I know Beethoven. Nothing happened. And so I, as a young, about a 14, 15 year old girl, she tapped this gentleman on the shoulder and said, Mr. Paderewski, could you play a tune for us? And Mr. Paderewski said, no, I'm not worthy of playing anything. I am not worthy, especially with Beethoven, with piano. I'm just not worthy. In fact, if I were to play, I would besmirch him, meaning that I would put a black mark on his name. I would tarnish him. I cannot play. And so he just remained there. And she thought for a moment, she stepped back. He said, how disappointing, how disappointing. A famous pianist not gonna play? And then she really thought for a while. She reflected and she said, you know what? How humble Mr. Pederewski is. How humble. And so the reason why I bring this story to our morning discussion or service is that here we find a juxtaposition, a contrast. A young person whose ego is so big now after hearing that the people liked her Symphony 5. And yet here is Paderewski sitting there very pensive, reflective, and thinking to himself, you know what? I am not worthy. I am not worthy. And you know, I wonder whether time, maturity, and so forth had a lot to do with Mr. Pederewski's response. And a young person who is still very, very in her youth, very, very proud of her accomplishments, her ego is very, very, they're very much there. And as you know, in Joseph Shinshu Buddhism, we all have an ego. Whether we rationalize and say that, no, we don't, or it's very minimal. You know what Shinran said? I spent 20 years in, in that Guji temple, and here I am, still the same. My ego, just as strong as ever, just as strong as ever. And so therefore, we're all like each other. We have an ego. But here again, we have this contrast. One person, 
very humble, another person still very exuberant. I want to read to you a passage from Jichuen Kakehashi Sensei, who is a very, very well-known scholar and a professor at Nikoku University who wrote this text. It's called Hearing the Buddhist Call, and it's on page 92. I hope it is not too long for you. But if you listen to what he has to say, I think it has a lot of importance. It's called Self-Centered Thoughts. Come to think of it, our daily life is always ruled by self-centered thoughts, whether we are aware of it or not. We care for what is convenient for us and call it good and right, while we hate what is inconvenient and call it evil and wrong. In this way, misguided by our own self-centered thoughts, we create a world filled with love and hate. I'll just go on to the next few lines later. Those who happen to share the same interest may come to form a party as comrades and hate others whom they do not. If we were to live our life in this way, being tossed back and forth by our blind passions of love and hate, carrying injuries all over our minds and bodies, our life would be entirely false, empty, and vain, as Shinran said. It is extremely difficult for us human beings to become aware of our own foolishness. Only by being awakened by the Tathagata's truth do we come to humbly recognize the foolishness and evilness within ourselves. Only then can we establish and experience true peace and serenity. And so that's Shinran's thoughts. And I wanted to share that with you because it certainly is part of me. Thank you very much for listening, everyone. Please put our hands together again in Gasho. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Roy Sensei, for your uh, Dharma message. And uh, we'll close this morning's service with the singing of Ondoksan, which you'll find on the Purple Book on 307. And I'm going to bring it up on the screen for the people at home. And if you're able to rise, uh, please join us. As we sing. Please be seated. So this will uh, conclude our uh, regular Sunday morning service. 
thank you all for attending. Uh, just a couple of announcements. So we have a Fujinkai AGM from 1 o'clock this morning. I have one more service, a Japanese service from 11.30, but I hope to be able to join you for your uh, Fujinkai AGM. And uh, next week, of course, is our, uh, is, uh, if of course, our uh, Shotsky service for February. So again, thank you all for coming, and thank you, Diane, for joining us. I see my mom pointing to you, so. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sensei. Yes. So, there's actually one more announcement by my uncle, so he can go with Good morning, everyone. Uh, last week, I had the honor of being the MC for the Ho'onko service, but at the end, after I got home, I realized I made a big mistake in closing with uh, what I explained to you about Reverend Sasaki talking to us or telling us the Dharma talk during one of his uh, visits here. I think it was in Obon at one time. And at the end, when uh, Sasaki Sensei met and uh, had dinner and a few drinks with, uh, I think you all know Ichiro Suzuki, the famous baseball player. Well, his father was at this restaurant that Sasaki Sensei was at. And uh, when they departed, Reverend Sasaki said, Banzai Ichiro. And Suzuki-san said to Sasaki-sensei, Banzai Shinran. But I had said at the end, Banzai Shintaro, which was wrong. It should have been Banzai Shinran. So I just wanted to make that correction. Thank you. <laughs>